This church has been trading Matthew 6 33 says inception. And no door is yet to be closed to us. God never lies. He handed that message to me 1976. Life. I call it the jackpot of life. You can make God first and be last. Stop toying with things. <laughs> Seek you first. This is my kingdom. And all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. I have lived in the reality of that mystery till now. I was 22 when it was handed over to me. And I'm more than 22 now. I've not had a rethink in the validity of that scripture. Do you want to walk in the order of favor that this ministry walks in? Matthew 6 and 3 is the master key. It gives you rest round about. It secures your present, your future, your posterity, and your eternity. What else are you looking for? Makoti and the car. But I can't sit for the kingdom of God for you. You have to do it for yourself. I can't. I don't believe that. That's a cup of tea. I believed it. I still believe it. And we live to the end of time believing it. Because it hasn't fed once. Arroz Kenado. Brektano Radikota. Emo Popanda Keti Kanoruanesa. You want me to tell you how much I believe in this thing? A friend of mine will ask me, what kind of car are you thinking of? I said, I'm not thinking of any car. I wasn't thinking of. No. Oh, it's time to pray for life partner. I don't need that. My own is covered by Matthew 33. That's how much I believe in. So I'm, um, is it a car I'm thinking about? A car? No. No. That's past forever. For eternity. If I get on the road here, trekking, the number of cars I will park to pick me, I'll be pick, picking around the youth. Amen. Now, now, whether it is church service or not, including unbelievers, they will pop, 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 enter this car, be taking it away. We don't need it. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I've never dreamt of a house in my life, sir. Nor prayed for one. Yet, I'm house full. Somebody said I was going to buy a property for me in Niagara Falls. I said, holiday home. I said, where's your property? Because I'm not on holiday. I'm not. Free house. I'm not on holiday. Seek you first. If you don't understand this in this house, you won't enjoy here. This is where the secret of our secret is. Joyfully pushing the kingdom. Exactly advance in the kingdom as individuals. You watch favor all around you, favor all around you, favor all around you. Now, beginning from this week, I decree your reorientation Amen. that will lead to your refocusing Amen. and bring you to a world of open doors. It shall be the beginning of months for you. Amen. I therefore decree open doors to your marital destiny. Amen. I decree open doors to your fruitful heritage. Amen. I decree open doors to your desired medical jobs. Amen. I decree open doors to your destruction of your runaway children. You are going to hear news this week. Yeah. That God has turned the table against your adversary. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. It shall be to you a month of months. Yeah. A month of supernatural restoration. Yeah. Every broken home shall be restored. Every lost business shall be restored. Every lost career shall be restored. In the 
name of Jesus. So shall it be. Everybody will return with a testimony this week. There shall be waves of testimonies at the midweek services. Waves of testimonies at WSF meetings. Waves of testimony this coming Sunday. Testimonies at Covenant Hall of Prayer. They shall all be testimonies of open doors. And your own shall be there. Your own shall be there. May the light of the world we have received today keep lightening our path on the days of our life. And so short time that everything works here. Not by schemes, not by games. Everything works here by engaging with the world that keeps things working. We know that all things are together for good to them that love God. No assumption. The burning love of God in a man qualifies him to enjoy all things working. Therefore, in the precious name of Jesus, I decree that every scheming of the devil to get any one of us off God's back, off the line of truth, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Your days of ups and downs are over. Your days of ups and downs are over. Your days of ups and downs are over. Your days of regret after regret, they are over. Lift up those two hands. And whatever that door is that you desire to open this week, speak to the Lord about it. The door to your marital restoration, the door to your career restoration, the door to your business restoration, the door to your spiritual restoration, very important, the door to your spiritual restoration. If you will say to that mountain, be moved, be removed. It shall be so. You shall have whatever you say. Door open, 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 open now, open now. This week is declared your week. The month of May is declared your month. Open now, open now, open now, open now. In Jesus, precious name we are praying. This week is declared your week of open doors. Testimonies of open doors will start attending to you from today. Testify this week. You shall testify this week. Our covenant of our prayer shall be full of testimonies. Our mini service shall be full of testimonies. Our WSM shall be full of testimonies. There shall be deluge of testimonies this coming Sunday. There shall all be testimonies of supernatural upon doors. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so I read Matthew, Mark, 
Luke, John, the first three months of my salvation. It worked some work in me that 10 years of prayer won't work. Sir. I was born with tuberculosis. I wasn't meant to live. One night I had that gruesome attack. And I said, Jesus, if it's true that you did all that you did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, do it now. As if, oh, I'll slap you. It's the faith of a baby. Child, make you no know verse. I remove it. I got free from 1960, forever. 1960, forever. My choice is not a, it's not a function of age. It's a function of taking responsibility. It's a function of, look at that, my daughter. See what she was saying. My God. I wish I could start from that point again. The words were matured. The language was penetrating. They are not just pumping things to their head. They were reaching their heart. Go back there and equip. There are many founders who are confounded. It's not about titles. I read like a mighty wind, 1974, by Metali. I read the sister copy, The Gentle Breeze of Jesus by Mel and non himself and his wife. It was to me an extension of the Acts of the Apostles. I saw raw miracles in the uh, Indonesian revival. I wasn't going to ministry. I wasn't preparing for ministry. I just was in love with the world. I started building my Christian library since I was 20. Since I was 20. Since I was 20. My greatest treasure till tomorrow is my library. Yes. If you steal my clothes, I buy a new one. <laughs> I told my wife, if I can imbibe the content of these materials, I, will, I could become a manufacturer of the things I will have bought. So I don't waste my money buying things from somewhere in America or Europe. They sell in Nigeria. <laughs> well... <laughs> Please have genuine value for knowledge. Nobody can write exam for you to pass an exam. You can be encouraged to study. Nobody can study for you. Your father can be the professor of a school and you still fail. That won't make your success. Your father is a smart person, an intelligent person, made a first class. Now you are a last class. Who is to blame? So it's all about we waking up on time to take responsibility. When I saw the Times and Seasons of Life, 1992, in my studies, nobody preached it to me. I took my life to another serious level of engagement. Again, my prayer is that you are marching out of this month as a natural commander of the supernatural. As you choose to take responsibility. One of my daughters was hit with stroke. And then Jesus touched her. And God released her. And the Lord said to me, It is her faith that make your prayer of faith work for her. No matter how anointed the one who prays for you, without your faith, you cannot receive. Jesus prayed for them in Nazareth. They, there was no change. And they marveled at their unbelief. You go collecting prayer. 
The prayer won't work without your faith at work. Your faith. Your faith. And your faith won't jump on you. It's built up by you. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. If you ask for how many men tell us about lay hands on, they are numberless. How many men can I take in lay hands on? How many? Okay, where are many of them? There are many are not in ministry anymore. It's the same hand. But different levels of responsibility that each one chooses to accept. One person here said, one of us said, I said, take any issue of your life as a project. And he did. 16 years, barrenness, cleared off. This morning we had one in the first service, 19 years. He, he received a word from the Lord and the baby in the womb of Elizabeth lived. For three months they could not, size, they could not see the baby in scan or blood test. The baby surged. They said the baby is three months old. He rose up. He took responsibility. I mean, this one, our teaching won't do much. It's to introduce you to the course. You now go to search. Students who wait only on lectures will only at best be average. <laughs> excellent students do excellent extra work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent extra work. And don't mind me, everybody is in the school. Yes, sir. Everybody's writing tests. Yes, Abraham wrote tests. He said, it came to pass out that God did test Abraham again. Yes, sir. That was PhD test. <laughs> <laughs> He's been testing him all along. Eh? Yes, sir. So he tested him again. Yes, sir. Tested him again. At age 114. So get ready. Test is continuous. Yes, sir. You better prepare for continuous assessment. Yes, sir. <laughs> Nobody can pass the test for you or for me. That's life. I've been in this church all along. Take responsibility. That's what. Take, that man said, I went out sharing flyers and praying in my home prayer. And suddenly, this uh, swollen on my scrotum disappeared. Suddenly, favor came from Germany. My God. Took responsibility. The good news is no one here will miss his place. Yeah. God's people do not perish for lack of prayer and fasting. Because everything, let's go and pray. Let's go and fast. Like I mentioned humorously, can I pray over you now to become a pilot? And then you now buy a uniform. And then you carry your pilot bag. You are going to the airport. They say, what's happening? They say, I'm not a pilot. How? Say, Papa, pray for me yesterday. <laughs> I pray for you to go and go to the training. I pray for you to succeed when you go. When you succeed, you become a pilot. Then you have a long way to become a captain. <laughs> you know, that, so don't mistake this for anything. My people are going to captivity because they have no knowledge, not because they have no prayer. Even the prayer you pray, if it's not prayed according to the word of God, he doesn't fly. This is the confidence we have in him. First John 5, 14 and 15. If he asks anything according to his will, it's only that time that he hears us. Not prayer of crying. Oh God. Oh. Oh. Is this how to treat me? Oh. What have I done? What have I not? Ask what have I not done? Yeah, we should move. And the nature of the thing was, look, let's quickly make something out of that place and move there. And the Lord said to me, should this church move to that place, that will be the end of this ministry. The ministry will have packed up in 89 if there was no access to that instruction. It was the normal thing to do, but not the right thing to do. Come on now. 
So many, many ministers have been stunted and grounded because of spiritual deafness and blindness. Spiritual deafness and blindness. You, I mean, don't. Everybody has access. I know my sheep and they know my voice. The same way you had your calling, you can hear his directives. We're coming into that. Should this church move to that place, that will be the end of this ministry. No guesswork. And you know how humorous God is? He led us to a 13 acre property in the center of the city. Awesome God. We move from glory to glory in ministry through the channel of visions and revelations. No guesswork. Visions and revelations of the Lord. But because God can speak to us at any time, show us whatever he wants to at any moment and anywhere, we must maintain a close watch in the spirit at all times to maximize our heritage of next levels. We must maintain a watch in the spirit at all times to maximize our heritage of next levels. I was in the car when God said, the harvest of Africa is now overripe, rushing and preserving from the cadence. May 4, 1994. Tired and weary after ministering in a church in Zaria on our way back to Kaduna. I was in the bedroom when God said, Arise, get down to Lagos and raise me a people. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard. But well, here you are. There's TV 24 hours. CNN, Azajira, BBC, Sky. All day long. Junks, junks, junks. Zero access. No one in ministry will ever outgrow divine direction. No one in ministry will ever outgrow divine direction. When God stops leading, the way forward is blocked. Growing in part in ministry is largely a function of sensitivity to the spirit, sensitivity to the move of the spirit of God. Every time the cloud moved, they moved. Whenever the cloud settled, they settled. When the cloud moved, they moved. Numbers chapter 9 and verse 15 to 23. Every movement signaled by the Holy Spirit is forward movement. God never leads backward. He always leads forward. Tell them that they go forward. 
God is an ever forward leading God. We just need to pick the signal. We just need to pick the signal. time we run with his directives or instructions, he backs up his word to confirm it. He backs up his word to confirm it. I say what God said with his mouth to my father David, he has by his hand performed it. 1 Kings 8, 15. By his hand performed it. Faith is it, I call it the who also will do it. You can't lack his hand on whatever is commanded when you receive, believe and engage with it. You can't lack his hand. Arise, get down to, Lag to Damascus. He moved our ministry from Meloni to Kaduna. Next level. Now, Arise, get down to Lagos. This many people. He moved the ministry to another level in Lagos. Now, this is the place right now. He moved us into this forest. You can't hear. You can't go forward. That's why I believe that among the things we are taken away from here is the capacity capacity to pick what God is saying to do part time so that you can be free from the horror of guesswork 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 one day the Lord came to me and he said I, the God of wonder double, is visiting you. May 2nd, 2015. It turned the fortune of our ministry forever. I, the God of wonder double, is visiting you. It changed everything like a dream of the night. Between that May 2nd, and July 26, the church literally multiplied by two. Over 100,000 people. That's how valuable access to his instructions can be. Wake up. You can't run ministry as industry and make anything out of it. Plan, project, you know, There's nothing wrong in planning. But commit thy ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will direct thy steps. Let him have it. There was no way you could make us plan to plan 5,000 new churches in a year. There was no way. There is no planning mechanism that can accommodate that. But, David, I'm planting 5,000 churches this year. God said he will plant 5,000 churches, and he did. And I said, okay, now let's do our own planning. We can't plant any church this year because we need to establish one we are planted. He said, you are planting 10,000 churches this year. Ah. And he did. That is the speed and next level of power that is in access to the voice of the Lord. That's level. We won't plan that forever. Planning forever. We have been a cell church for a long time in our ministry. As a student of Yonggi Cho, I learned that along with my 
studies. And right now we have gone um, near 20,000. And it just came up in 2021. You are doubling number of sales this year. What? All that we have been doing all our years. And it did. It did. Access to the voice of, the, of His Majesty establishes supernatural change of levels. In the name of Jesus, you are leaving this place with clarity of access to divine instructions. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? God will only go with us as we follow his plan and purpose for us, not our plan. We experienced some humor last year. God said, you are entering 75 new nations this year <laughs> as a commission. And then... Um, my God, 75 new nations, and he gave us 83 new nations in one year. Because he said so, and you had so, you believed so, and you operated, you act so, and God confirmed it. It's not projection, it's direction. That's coming to visions and revelations of the Lord. Someone has asked me before, how do you get things done so cheaply in this ministry? I said, we do nothing except it is commanded. We do nothing except it is commanded. We do nothing except it is commanded. Not that God will never back up any self tied contentious, or competitive vision of anyone. We just heard that before. The last teaching was over. Stop comparing yourself with anybody else. Run your own race. Without God's backing, impact in ministry is impossible. Change of level is impossible. We were on a failed mission to Kumasi for six years. We went on our own. We were not led to. Six years of no imprint, no imprint, no imprint. Three crusades held in that place without any imprint. Hi guys, this is Emeka Ansley, and I strongly believe that one of the secrets that has I don't helped go to any God's servant Bishop David to the church. His prayer and fasting. Think about it. He encountered Everything the power to hear God. Was invested, After he three days no fasting problem. and prayer, he also encountered the power to, to, to experience healing and deliverance. After he three days fasting and prayer, it's amazing what prayer and fasting change your life as a Christian. Watch this video and be blessed. By strength shall no man prevail. Now, how to assess visions and revelations in the pursuit of ministry? Number one. Be spiritual. A natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. Because they are spiritually designed. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. Be spiritual. Be spiritually minded. Be spiritually minded. Be spiritually cloaked. For to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. Number two, be a man and a woman of the spirit. I will stand upon my watch. What does that mean? Come up either. And I'll show you the thing that we grow tomorrow. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Come out of the flesh into the spirit, and I will show you the things that will grow tomorrow. Come out of the flesh, come into the spirit, and I will show you the thing that will grow tomorrow. I was in the spirit on the last day, and I heard 
Be a man or a woman of the spirit to pick what God is saying and show him per time. Be a man or a woman of the spirit to pick what God is showing and saying per time. Something humorous happened here, October 21, 2022. Well, before we embark on Covenant University project, after they gave us the license, the federal government gave us the license, I said, Jesus, if it's not you, tell me I will tear this paper right now. I don't want to add anything to your assignment in my life. And I heard them say, it is I, straight. February 12, 2022. And then he did something unusual, sir. And I'm going to show you that later. In seven months, he completed the facilities needed to house 1,500 students, facilities for lectures, facilities for offices, roads, net network, everything in seven months. No debt, no pressure. Because he commanded it. When we were dedicating it, we got to the gate. After dancing around the way we do like mad people, we go to the gate. He said, hand is over to me now. And I said, how? He said, lay down flat before me at this gate on the beer floor. I did. Jesus took over from that day, October 21, 2022. No sweat, no rise in temperature, no pressure. We were running Covenant University at Lauren, the primary school. Zero pressure. Just by picking... The resident pastor made a statement in the third service that God is too big to occupy second place. He's too big to occupy second place in anyone's life. So if we claim to love God, then what place does God occupy in our lives? Matthew 22, from verse 36 to 40, Jesus was asked the question, Master, Master, what is is the great commandment of the Lord, the great. And Jesus answered, Thou shalt love the Lord, thy God, with all thy heart. With all thy heart. And in verse 39, he said, This is the first. And the great, 38, I beg your pardon, this is the first. And the great commandment, love God. Make him first. Make him first in every aspect of our lives. So the question is, where is God placed on our list of priorities? That's a question every believer must answer. Where is the agenda of God placed on the hierarchy of important items to us? Where do we place God and his agenda when it comes to the matters of our lives? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. The Bible makes it clear, seek ye first, not second. Not first and half. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his agenda. So love simply means a God first lifestyle. Number two, now we're extracting this definition from Jesus himself. Number two, love is keeping his commandments. Love is keeping his commandment. John 14 and verse 21. He said, he that has my commandment and keepeth them. He had them and he keeps them. He hears them and he obeys them. Then he it is that loveth me. So no man can claim to love God without obeying his commandments. He it is that loveth me. First John 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God that will keep his commandment. This is the love of God that will comply with his instructions. So our compliance... To his commandments in season and out of season. Your compliance and my compliance to his divine commandment is what defines 
and validate our love for God. So no man can claim, as much as he, he tries to, no man can claim to love God if he does not keep his commandments. Please hear this. There's nothing mystical or magical about the love of God. A man cannot love God without knowing. There are proofs to validate and confirm our love for God. And if we love him, we will keep his commandments. Number three, what is love? Love is serving the interest of God on the earth. Serving, serving the interest of God on the earth. John 21 from verse 15 to 17. John 21 from verse 15 to 17. Now the Bible says when they are dined, Jesus said to Simon, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this. More than this. Now in the earlier verses of that scripture, Jesus had performed miracles. They had fished all night, caught nothing. Nevertheless, at his instruction, cast thy net on the right side. They enclosed so great. They saw raw miracle. They saw validation of his authority as the Messiah. And I believe Jesus was asking Simon, who was one of the closest associates, Simon, Simon, do you love me more than these things? What is your motivation? Are you following me for what you get from me? Or are you following me because you love me? Many believers are only out to use God. Lord, you give me a miracle job, I will serve you. Lord, you get me married this year, I will serve you. God is asking, Jesus is asking, like Simon, lovest thou me more than this? And Simon said, yeah, Lord. And he said, you must prove it. You must validate it. It's not enough to say, I love you. You must validate it. And how? Serve my interest. Serve my interest. For instance, we're in a prophetic season of the midst of the year. Every child of God under the banner of this great commission has a mandate on the harvest field, on the prayer altar, partnering with Jesus for the advancement of his kingdom, serving the interest of his kingdom in rescuing the souls of those ordained to perish. But you, you and I can validate our love for God as much as we are involved in servicing his interest. Now listen to this. You can service God's interest and God not service your own interest. You can't be about God's business and God won't be about your business. So our claim to love God must be validated in servicing the interest of his kingdom. May every one of us receive grace in this concluding part of the midst of the year to keep servicing the interest of our master. Say louder amen if you are there. Great men like David Yonggi Cho and while these men had the opportunity to serve the purposes of God in their lifetime, the reason why they modeled such level of increase, such level of excellence in church growth was because at the back of their desire was world evangelization, not fame. Same with fathers in the faith like Baba Deboe. I remember when he clocked 80, um, his mandate was to be able to win I can't remember how many, how many, about 8 million souls with the remaining time he has. Can you imagine, you ask a man, what do you want? And anything he says will almost become an instruction for you. And yet he says, all I want is 8 million souls. That's what brought about the Light Up campaign globally. That within the time, I remember one time, you know, just respectfully speaking, I was speaking to one of his people and I said, I hope you people get to rest, please tell you know daddy he should take some time to rest and he said no he will rest when he gets to heaven as far as the earth is concerned i must walk the walks of him that sent me this is a man in his 80s and there are many many young people jumping up and down crying and say i want a double portion of his grace without a double portion of the desire 
world evangelization please hear me no matter how sophisticated you are as far as revelation is concerned if your life does not directly translate to soul winning effective soul winning when it has to do with soul winning numbers matter when it has to do with discipleship numbers may not matter but ladies and gentlemen soul winning is one soul at a time if you win hundred souls versus ten souls hundred souls are better by far but when it has to do with discipleship you can have 5,000 members versus 20 members and you are dealing with 20 more effective people. I repeat, in soul winning, numbers matter. That means our lives must be all about using every scriptural mechanism to bring people to Jesus. Hallelujah. To bring people to Jesus. One time I was told that that the geo was preaching among pastors it was a pastor's conference also and when he was done preaching was it his leaders or there about can't remember the story exactly then he made an altar call these are people he trained but there's no taking chances who knows hi guys this is a maker and slam and i welcome you to my youtube channel what god's servant apostle selman is saying in this video is absolutely correct i've worked with bishop Woody Paul for quite some time now and i can tell that evangelism is always top priority in his teachings watch the rest of the video and be blessed cheers yes in the mind of god no matter who you are and no matter what you do if it does not translate to the conversion of souls you are not much in the kingdom that is the truth it's as simple as that never see a soul winner and believe that soul winner is wasting time the soul winner cannot preach but if he can bring people to jesus he is great in the kingdom it's important for us to redefine our success by superior spiritual references there are many many people as believers even as men of god in a whole year you can literally count by hand the number of people who are saved it's a waste of platform it's a waste of grace 2.6 billion professing christians this is not an advocacy of an evangelist this is a cry that is in the heart of god and listen let me tell you the truth the bible says i shall not die we fear death a lot but the bible says that your longevity in the kingdom among many other factors is connected to your participating in the great commission i shall not die but live and declare in other words if your life is not actively contributing as far as the great commission is concerned there is no justification for your longevity hmm. are we still together power was given to the disciples with respect to great commission the great commission influence with respect to the great commission today we desire power prosperity fame but in isolation to the great commission all of the engracings that come from god to the believer are supposed to be tools that will be used eventually for the harvest so there are many people praying for the grace for miracles signs and wonders and it is absolutely not connected to the great commission no wonder those you read about in the bible and those you read about you know in modern history we call them god's generals the reason why we do not see the kind of power and manifestation of the spirit in their lives was be that we saw in their lives was because their attention was not on power their attention was not on the miraculous their attention was on fulfilling the great commission and whilst they went the bible says the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following in acts chapter 8 when you read from verse 5 the Bible speaking about Philip said that Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ in obedience to the mandate. He preached Christ. As soon as he got to Samaria, there was no other business. Listen, these guys were so intoxicated by this assignment. If they found him, themselves in a city, whether they were free or in chains, their, their prayer point was not freedom from captivity. Their prayer point was how do I, everybody was a harvest to them. Everybody. If they were in the prison, it was an opportunity for everybody the jailer the prisoners everybody his family were harvest they saw a damsel rejoicing prophesying by the spirit of divination a harvest 
they were flogged and taken to prison they were harvest conscious if you're together say amen, amen. they never allowed any opportunity to be wasted you make a mistake of bringing paul before any of the council give him five minutes to open his mouth and you will almost be converted he he coordinated his intelligence his energy when paul was in prison you would think he should be frustrated he's thinking okay if i were free now i would have been reaching these people let me at least write a letter a letter to this church i hope you are still well behaved i'm coming out soon and i assure you when i come out i'm coming straight to you if you come out of prison won't you run away go and read your bible the mandate that Jesus gave us requires a level of aggression. This is the reason why when you love your life, the Bible says you will lose it. You have to love him more than your life. That your life is all about the Great Commission. Today people desire fame. Today people desire to be celebrities, respectfully speaking, even as men of God. We desire elevated platforms and you will be surprised that in all of that desire, the purposes of the kingdom, even world evangelization is the least of our concerns. Great men like David Yonggi Cho, and while these men had the opportunity to serve the purposes of God in their lifetime, the reason why they modeled such level of increase, such level of excellence in church growth was because at the back of their desire was world evangelization, not fame. Same with fathers in the faith like Baba Deboe. I remember when he clocked 80, um, his mandate was to be able to win I can't remember how many, how many, about 8 million souls with the remaining time he has. Can you imagine, you ask a man, what do you want? And anything he says will almost become an instruction for you. And yet he says, all I want is 8 million souls. That's what brought about the Light Up campaign globally. That within the time, I remember one time, you know, just respectfully speaking, I was speaking to one of his people and I said, I hope you people get to rest, please tell you know daddy should take some time to rest and he said no he will rest when he gets to heaven as far as the earth is concerned i must walk the walks of him that sent me this is a man in his 80s and there are many many young people jumping up and down crying and say i want a double portion of his grace without a double portion of the desire world evangelization please hear me no matter how sophisticated you are as far as revelation is concerned if your life does not directly translate to soul winning effective soul winning when it has to do with soul winning numbers matter when it has to do with discipleship numbers may not matter but ladies and gentlemen soul winning is one soul at a time if you win 100 souls versus 10 souls 100 souls are better by far but when it has to do with discipleship, you can have 5,000 members versus 20 members and you are dealing with 20 more effective people. I repeat, in soul winning, numbers matter. That means our lives must be all about using every scriptural mechanism to bring people to Jesus. Hallelujah. To bring people to Jesus. One time I was told that that the geo was preaching among pastors it was a pastor's conference also and when he was done preaching was it his leaders or there about i can't remember the story exactly then he made an altar call these are people he trained but there's no taking chances who knows <laughs> may god restore our passion for souls <laughs> hallelujah May God restore our passion for souls. May God increase our passion to be greater than our desire for power. May God increase our passion for world evangelization to be greater than our passion for money and fame and all of these things. I am telling you that all that we seek only finds its value when it is connected to purpose. In this case, world evangelization. This is the... Nobody's reminded to go to work. Nobody's reminded to shower. Nobody's reminded to eat. If you notice, you may set alarm for other things, but how many set an alarm for food? 
When it is time, it is time. Something begins to do you on the inside that tells you it is time to refoil. That is the same way in the revival. Something is doing you in your spirit that tells you it is time to recharge. In the natural, we refoil. In the realm of the spirit, we recharge. And we need to recharge our batteries, spiritual batteries, every day. So you come on Monday to the covenant hour of prayer, you are recharging. Somebody's wondering, but I attended four services yesterday. Why show up on Monday? Ah, battery is already at 65%. It is time to recharge. And if you are like me, I want my battery at 100%. I never know when I'm stepping out where I may not find power in this part of the land. So I reach every time there is power, there is a cable to recharge. A, a, a cable at home, a cable at the office, a cable in the car. Because you never know. The moment you see 1% gone down, you plug it. Monday you are recharging. Tuesday you are recharging. By Wednesday you have double charge. In the morning, in the evening. Thursday you are recharging. Friday you are recharging. Saturday you are recharging at WSF. In fact, Saturday double charge. Covenant our prayer, WSF. And then Sunday, oh my God, you are, you are double charged. Now, how can you compare that kind of life to the one who exhausts the battery? Why will you wait till it is 1% to charge? Why wait when there is a recharging center? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. When you live in a world of darkness, and you see a citadel of light. What do you do? You step in. You have your cable. You have your phone. You just now the cable is your faith. So you come, but you come with your faith. You have your, your, your phone or your device, you have your faith, and you come to Mount Zion, you plug it. Before long, you are living hundred percent. Green light everywhere, fully charged, waiting for the next devil to discharge. Because you are not the same person that entered Mount Zion. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And God's people shall possess their possessions. In a revival, there are multiple charge opportunities per day. Even if you cannot step there for any reason, you've done the covenant hour prayer, you know that there is a prayer rate going on, you also put it on, on your computer, recharging again. It is never too much. Never let the devil meet you with low battery. Ensure that you have enough charge because sufficient to the day are the evils thereof. In a revival, going to church becomes a way of life. Acts chapter 2 verse 46, they were meeting daily in the temple. Daily. Those days are back. Daily. Charged at all times. And when they see oppositions, they smile. Because they know they have what it takes to handle it. Do you know whatever has troubled you before this revival? You will go back and trouble it. <laughs> I thought somebody shouted amen to that. You know, there are individuals who are troubled by circumstances. And there's another dimension of individuals that trouble their troubles. The Bible talks about in the Acts of the Apostles in the midst of that revival, they said these men do trouble our city. If you can't trouble your challenge, your challenge will trouble you. So, in the midst of that, going to church becomes a way of life. What is in the revival for us? Quickly, number one, financial fortune is unleashed upon engaging believers in a revival financial fortune they are not struggling yet they are not praying for it god's fortune because you see in this kingdom wealth is entrusted god has to trust you until you become one that is involved in a revival you are not a candidate for trust he said who shall put in your trust the true riches in a revival financial fortune is unleashed people will step into realms of fortune they didn't bargain for they will have properties and facilities they didn't buy businesses will be handed over to them they never they never dreamed of oh yes it happens 
Because you see, even financial fortune answers to power. He will give us the power to get well. In the revival, we are plugged to power. We dispatch the power, discharge the power, and things that we have our name on it that is yet to locate us now begin to find us. There are things with your name and my name on it that are not yet in our possessions. But in the midst of the revival, they will what? Possess their possessions. Financial fortune is finished. Luke chapter 16, verse 11. Luke 16, please. Verse 11. Luke 16, verse 11. To trust and to riches. Number two, what is the revival for us? Divine health. Divine health. It is the lot of every engaging believer in a revival. Divine health. Because in the midst of a revival, sicknesses disappear like they never existed. Creative miracles take place that are so unusual. There are things that will be happening that if it were told us, we will not believe except that we are there and saw it live. In revivals of past and current revivals, all kinds of untold miracles taking place. How do you explain where a metal implant was put in a hand and God said, go to bed, I want to operate on you. If not that you were in this church, you would say these people are lying. And we saw the metal implant. He, he, he woke up from there and saw the metal implant on the side of his bed. Ah, in the midst of a revival, the chief surgeon is at work. He can do anything. You see, he can operate without spilling blood. And we saw that from the beginning. He brought out Eve from Adam. No mark. What are you saying? In a revival, there is nothing called impossibility. Cancer canceled. HIV destroyed. All kinds of things. Now hear me. It is only out of a revival that there is no solution. In the midst of a revival, no matter the sickness, no matter the disease, no matter the verdict on your life, I'm telling you that I know the one who can reverse. He said, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until it comes to his right it is, and I will give it to him. In the midst of a revival, sicknesses and diseases lose their grip over people. Therefore, rejoice. Anything that you may have been afflicted with from the pit of hell, within June and July. Now, hear this. That it made a mistake to enter the midst of the year, it is finished. If that sickness enter June, enter July, you can go to bed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, within this midst of the year, glory and revival, divine health shall be restored to every one of us. But you know, health is the secondary part of healing. You can't be in health where there are still pains. So God is saying, you have come today to this covenant day of healing so I can heal you and then you can step into the next class of health. Health means you are living in a state of no sickness, no disease, no pain. We've had God's servant share this testimony of Kenneth e. Hagen of blessed memory at a point he said for 65 years, I do not know what headache feels like. There are people who are walking on the earth who don't know what pain feels like. In this revival, you and I are stepping into that class. I said, you and I are stepping into that class. I said, you and I are stepping into that class. Exodus 23, 25 to 26, you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. He will take away sickness from the midst of thee. I love that. He will take it away from the midst of thee. Not just from you, but from your environment. There are people here in the midst of this revival. Everyone under your roof. It becomes impossible for sickness and disease to touch any one of them. That means there will be a radius that is impenetrable. In the midst of this revival and beyond. And that is happening for you and I. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Remember a faithful ambassador is health. God's ultimate plan is health. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in hell. How would you walk in the midst of this revival if your body is not strong? I wish above all things you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. Number three, what is in this revival for us? Every revival empowers believers to command the supernatural. I and they that the Lord given unto me we are for signs and for wonders isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 
at their hand, their fingertips, they control the events of life. God told Moses, he said, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Exodus 7.1. And he said to us, I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. That means you should be able to determine the happenings in your environment. If you say no to something, no should be it. You can step on that street in the midst of this revival where there has been robbery and say, from today, no more robbery around this environment. Those are dimensions. You should be able to step into the office and say, every manipulation in this office ends now supernatural supernatural that, that is you are determining the happenings this is that season for us i said this is that season for us i said this is that season for us there are places when we enter the climate should change that's what gods do they looked at paul and they said the gods have come to us in the likeness of men that was in the midst of a revival the supernatural, exhuming without struggles. You say no to this, it is no. You say yes to this, it is yes. You say peace be still, peace is installed. No struggle. I'd like us to know living under the natural is not God's ultimate plan. But influencing the natural by the spiritual and the supernatural is God's ultimate plan. That is we determine the happiness from today. In the midst of this revival going forward, whatever you say should happen. Even the elements will begin to obey you and I. Somebody shout of the devil. Now, let me say this truth and it will shock you. Even when doctors can name the sickness, it is a disguise. It's an oppression. What they are naming is, oh my God, is the fruit. What is hidden is the root. Behind every fruit, is the root. God is saying to us, this is the root. What the doctor said they saw is the fruit because they can't see it until it manifests. Oh, is somebody hearing God? They can't see it until it, so they can't dictate what doesn't fruit up. But behind the fruit, behind the fruit is the root. The easiest way to kill the fruit is to lay the axe at the root of the tree. And when it is laid at the root of the tree, when it is cut down, it's only a matter of time. The fruit will dry up. What God is saying to somebody here, no matter how you came today, by the axe that is laid at the root of the tree, that tree that my heavenly father has not planted in your life called sickness or disease or pain or cancer or headache or whatever name it is called or diabetes hypertension oh my god hiv whatever name partial blindness partial deafness whatever name it is called that axe is laid at the root of the tree today let me hear a deep rooted amen But I love this. He doesn't only heal the sick. He delivers the captive. There are some that are in captivity. They have imprisoned themselves. By fear. Whatever the case is. Jesus specializes in it. He doesn't only heal the sick. He delivers the captive. Ah, Look at this. He doesn't only deliver the captive. He raises the dead. Ah, For the day has come. Where the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. John 5 25. And that day came. John 11, verse 40 to 44. Jesus said, Roll away the stone. He said, Stink. He said, Roll away the stone. And he said, Father, I thank you because you have heard me. Now, Lazarus, come forth. Everything in your body, on your life, on my life, on my body. That represents the state of Lazarus. Maybe it is the kidney. Maybe it is the liver. Maybe it is the eyes. Maybe it is the lungs. Whatever it is that has got into that Lazarus state. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one to whom we have gathered in this fourth service. In this covenant day of healing. That organ of your body at that state is coming back to life.
Thank、you